So quality of life is impacting things that may or may not have anything to do with cancer as a disease. The idea behind the quality of life measure would be, hey, it's Dr. A. Welcome to the channel where we talk about all things integrative, naturopathic, and otherwise. And we talk a lot about treatments. Today, I'm going to answer some questions that we got about a particular treatment we did other videos on, intravenous vitamin C and patients who have cancer. And this particular question came in the form of, I've heard about, you know, the range of doses for vitamin C. I've heard about high dose vitamin C in cancer patients, but what about vitamin C intravenously and quality of life for cancer patients. Can you speak specifically to that? So the way that the questions kind of came in, I wanted to dive into this and speak specifically to quality of life types of intravenous therapy around vitamin C. Now, the first thing, there's a difference in intravenous vitamin C between lower doses and higher doses. That difference then is divided into how many milligrams or grams of intravenous vitamin C you're going to be putting into the IV and then into the patient. And then that division is going to then divide biologically into kind of two camps. Now, these are a bit arbitrary, but this generally is the direction that it goes. Lower doses tend to be an antioxidant. That's what vitamin C normally does in our body. Higher doses, which we've talked about on a few of the other videos, high-dose vitamin C, generally considered around 25 grams or higher. Most high-dose vitamin C that's given in an average-sized adult is 50 to 75 grams, but 25 or higher, those are pro-oxidant potentially doses. So we're not talking about high doses today. We're just going to talk about low doses and quality of life and research and things. So in the research uh, for cancer patients, normally lower doses of vitamin C have been studied somewhere between 5 grams or 5,000 milligrams IV and around 10 to 12 grams or 10,000 to 12,000 milligrams in an IV bag. And they're done with patients generally with advanced cancer, and they're done to see if they can improve quality of life. So the low dose strategies that you see, again, you know, let's say five to 12 grams of intravenous vitamin C are specifically studied, at least to this particular date, in people generally with advanced cancer and looking at would this lower dose strategy of vitamin C improve their quality of life. So then you might say, well, what is the difference between improving quality of life and improving a treatment outcome with my cancer? Well, they might cross over, but generally speaking, quality of life measures are focused on how you are feeling, how you're able to interact with the world around you, etc. And so the studies generally are set up in the intervention is they give a certain number of low-dose grams of vitamin C intravenously, and they give it periodically to to a patient on different schedules. And then they have them do quality of life surveys that are statistically uh, validated. There's different types of quality of life surveys. And then they baseline the survey at the beginning, and then they might do one in the middle, and they certainly do one at the end. Now, what they've noticed in, the, and there's a handful of studies, there's not hundreds of studies on this, but there's a handful. What they've noticed in three different continents now is that low-dose vitamin C strategies can improve quality of life in patients who have cancer. That's generally the summary that you get. So quality of life is impacting things that may or may not have anything to do with cancer as a disease. The idea behind the quality of life measure would be you know that you have this disease, cancer, but you also have the whole rest of your body that doesn't have cancer that has normal cells, and you would like the maximum amount of quality of life so that you can do what you want to do, you can be present with people that you care about, you can be as mobile as you can be, potentially you can you know eat and drink as, as you would like for your quality of life, sleep is good, pain is reasonable, etc. So the main symptoms that are looked at on these surveys are fatigue, sleep, pain quality, digestive issues, and that, that could be any number of subcategories, but digestive system function. And then depending on the survey, sometimes they will ask about your ability for cognition, your ability to be you know, mentally present and able to be with the your loved ones, et cetera, and, and do what you need to. And in 
the research I was involved in, we would often have patients who would say, well, you know, I have advanced stage four cancer and I am really, I understand where that's at. It would be advanced stage four cancer, but their goal was not that the cancer go away, but that their quality of life would improve. So they needed less pain medication. They would be more present with their loved ones. They would be able to have, you know, cognition to be present with the loved ones. They maybe would have uh, lower amounts of pain and better fatigue, any of those things. And generally speaking, if that was the goal, a quality of life intervention, lower doses of vitamin C do quite well for that. And again, that's usually somewhere between 5 and 10, 5 and 12 grams, also known as 5,000 milligrams to 12,000 milligrams. And we would see that kind of effect in people. Now, when might we use low-dose vitamin C in a cancer patient, even when we might otherwise want to use high-dose vitamin C. Well, high-dose vitamin C is generally more of an immune support treatment and all of that, but some people don't have proper kidney function for high-dose vitamin C, so they can't get high-dose vitamin C, but it might be appropriate to do low-dose vitamin C. Some people have enzyme deficiencies like G6PD or other red blood cell type abnormalities that preclude them from getting high-dose vitamin C, and they can be appropriately given low-dose vitamin C because, again, it's low-dose. It's not going to create those oxidative damaging issues that come up biochemically. So there are times even if a patient might say want a higher dose that biologically, medically speaking, et cetera, that it's just contraindicated to do. So they may, we may stick with a low dose vitamin C type of a uh, schedule and a protocol. Now, what are other things that could be done? Well, other things with low dose vitamin C that we've done with patients with really positive effect on quality of life are to put them in into hydrating formulas. Now, not every IV that you get is hydrating. Some are dehydrating, as a matter of fact. So they chemically have to be balanced in a particular way in order to assist hydration. And so when you are working on, you know, setting up a low-dose vitamin C strategy, a lot of times they're made so that they are more in hydrating sort of chemistry. The other thing is low-dose vitamin C can be combined with potentially other, you know, B vitamins and minerals, etc. Whereas high-dose vitamin C generally is just vitamin C and a very few selected minerals to balance it, its administration out. So let's say you're giving, you know, 5 grams or 10 grams of vitamin C in a low-dose strategy and the person needs some B vitamins or other things, those can be used together. Let's say they need to be hydrated, that can be structured in a way so that it's hydrating, etc. Now, we get a lot of questions about, well, what is, is the vitamin C going to be, you know, contraindicated if I'm on a maintenance chemotherapy or something like that? And uh, one of the parts of the human research that I was involved in was creating a uh, research review that looked at vitamin C and different chemotherapies. Now, it's not studied in every chemotherapy, but in some of the more commonly used chemotherapies, what we see in the research is that vitamin C is actually synergistic. It's actually a good collaborator with most of the chemotherapies. You do have to have considerations, which is why you want to go to you know a provider who is trained in the use of vitamin C in cancer patients. And the reason you want to do that is while it may be synergistic to give vitamin C and the chemo within proximity to one another, if your kidneys are under stress, for example, we might separate them a bit. If you have other laboratory findings, we might separate them a bit or we may adjust the doses or something of that nature. But generally speaking, surprisingly to almost all of my oncology colleagues, vitamin C in the research either has a neutral effect or a synergistic effect with most chemotherapies that it's been studied in. I hope this answers the question about low-dose vitamin C, especially in cancer patients and quality of life. And uh, we, we love your questions. The uh, YouTube channel uh, podcast is growing. We really appreciate that. So uh, keep them coming. We're going to link up some other videos. We also have playlists on vitamin C and on many other topics there on the main YouTube channel. So go check those out or check these links out, and I'll see you all on the next video.